innovative tech companies are bringing blockchain technology to all kinds of industries every day. And Scholar is designed to bring transparency, efficiency, and equity to the student funding ecosystem by leveraging blockchain as well as DeFi and Web3. And with me has been Knaus, who is the CEO of Scholar, and Ted Zipoy, the Chief Operating Officer. So great to have you here yeah, today. Yeah, thanks for having us. So let's just talk about what Scholar is trying to do. What problem are you trying to solve? Absolutely. So we realized early on in talking to donors that, you know, they were very disenchanted with the current, you know, donation process to academic endowments. Uh, like Ted likes to say, it's sort of a black box at the moment. You come in, you donate your money, you get a write-off slip. You don't get to feel any tangible, you know, feel of where that money goes, how it's interacted with students. So what we've created is a, a protocol uh, built on the Akala network where donors can come in set up a donor advised fund and they can actually direct their money to what uh, sort of segments students uh, they want to sponsor. So say women in STEM at the University of Minnesota or black engineers. Um, so that's basically what we've created and we find donors love the experience a lot more and we can make sure kids receive 99% of the money versus 50%. Okay, so. I mean, that's a huge problem to solve. And you mentioned the Ocala network. So explain why that is important to how you, the business works. Absolutely. Uh, a call is super important to us just given the, the ecosystem and the technology. Just a touch on that ecosystem. A lot of the projects that we collaborate with and find in that world are very much so based on real world use cases. So less so some of the pie in the sky stuff, but real world tangible stuff tied to things that we interact with every day instead of some of the more uh, experimental DeFi plays. On the other side, from a technology standpoint, their stack is really easy for us to use and integrate. Um, stable coins are a big part of our strategy. They've got a really solid play and strategy set up on that side. Um, so just from that ecosystem and the technology standpoint, it helps us move quickly and actually you know, partner with projects that have that real world tie back like uh -huh. we do. So explain like how it works. Like let's say I want to donate to my alma mater, um, but I want to make sure it goes to what a female in television or something. So how, do, how does the process work? Yeah, so one of our biggest goals is to exist in what we call Web 2.5, or kind of that the hybrid finance, so that people coming into the ecosystem don't uh, necessarily have to have that full Web3 experience. So an everyday donor can come on. It's a very simple process. You can donate cash or crypto. Um, we do have a registered nonprofit that we can issue tax documents through. Um, and after that, you basically choose your, your, uh, who you'd like to give to. Like we had mentioned, um, that can be anywhere at a specific university. Maybe it's a social cause you're passionate, passionate about. Um, you basically set up those parameters in a very simple way. Um, you donate your crypto, and we give you your tax break from, from that point. Mm -hmm. um, from there, we actually do have a, what we call a scholarship platform. So basically, it's right now 30,000 students expect that number to grow. Um, students applying to scholarships, I like to call it the, the Tinder for scholarships. Instead of seeking them out one by one from both private and uh, kind of institutional places, you can fill out your profile, apply in one click, uh, and end that process. So at the end of the day, as a donor, it's very simple. Donate, choose who you'd like to fund, and then on the other side, we kind of pick the best of the best candidates and present them yeah. to you. And I saw you could, like, with one click, apply to, like, 50 different scholarships, right? Instead of filling out each one and all the specifics. Of yeah, it. it saves tons of time. Uh -huh. So in the traditional world, you would come in, it's going to take you 40, 50 minutes for each scholarship. Now you can one click apply um, to all of these and you get access to all the DAF scholarships as well. So it's a huge time saver up front and you're getting access to money that previously never existed on chain that's open and transparent. Oh, interesting. And you use the blockchain then so everybody knows that the money is going to where it is intended to go. That's where the blockchain technology Absolutely. comes in. Exactly. Okay. And that's one of the biggest problems in that academic endowment space right now is that you make a donation, you basically will stay, they say, we'll see you next year. Yeah. Uh, and uh, You just trust that <laughs> it's going to go to something positive. Absolutely. <laughs> the value right. of blockchain, you yeah. can see that end to end and you know, basically track it right into the student's account yeah. is what we want to bring. So. And a lot of that money that actually sits in academic endowments ends up in bonuses. Absolutely. You know, facilities. Hire so. another vice president of this or that. Or, <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So that's intuition continues to go higher. So there's a lot of questions about, you know, the money and is it worth it and where's it going and yeah. Absolutely. And we make sure, obviously, because it's on chain, that money goes to the student's financial aid office. So it's not like the student's just getting money to their MetaMask wallet. It's actually going direct yeah. to their financial aid office. So yeah. that's another thing. Blockchain is, you know, 
poised for. Yeah, no, it's a, I mean, the applications are really great. And speaking of that, could you ever use this for other charities as well? It's definitely something we've explored, <laughs> and we actually get that question quite okay. a bit. And what we had thought is, given the history of our platform, born from our Web 2.0 platform, that kind of application, the, the dating app for scholarships, um, we kind of had that leg up to focus in on academia. Um, but that being said, our technology is definitely portable and scalable to other academic, uh, not only just academic endowments, but endowments of all kinds and uh, nonprofits that we're looking to engage with. But since we had that leg up, that you know, start, this was the best place for us. Yeah, and for us, it was you know to try to not boil the ocean right away, right? Like the academic endowments right now in the U.S., it's uh, I think it's six hundred ninety-seven billion dollars. So. Um, attacking that and having success, and then obviously we're going to, you know, branch out into other roadmap items, and that's definitely sure. one of no, them. That makes a lot of sense. I mean, master one, and then you can use it from there. So what would be some other use cases, potentially? Something we're really excited about is still within that academia sphere, but think away from traditional four-year universities. Um, some... Um, demographics that are very underserved are those two-year or technical schools that a lot of them don't have endowments, don't have actively managed funds. And on top of that, as we've lived in this Web3 space, there's actually a demand for what we call certificate-based learning or some of these coding boot camps. So students that don't want to do that four-year investment, um, that want to kind of get up and running, get that coding underneath them and get building, um, there's not really a great um, funding mechanism for them. And so that's a gap that we're excited to bridge. Actually just kind of had our first pilot of that, partnering with some people in the space and um, huge demand and thirst for that Web3 based learning. No, and I, I think, you know, something uh, Kevin O'Leary touches on a lot, the smartest fingers on keyboards are, you know, coming on chain. So that's, that's somewhere we want to absolutely direct a lot of our focus and, you know, kind of help bridge the gap and get, you know, onboard people in that need the financial access to it. Yeah. So. Well, I've actually talked to people in the blockchain space that say, like, those kind of quick degrees are better because the technology is changing so quickly, you go to a four-year school, and by the time you finish a class, everything's changed, you gotta learn something new again. So a more nimble kind of education experience might be better for this type of technology. Absolutely. Yeah. The biggest thing for us was, you know, Web3 money going into Web3 uh -huh. um, and kind of seeing that. It's also for, you know, companies looking to hire the best talent. It's a, actually a really great way to, one, invest in them and then have that pipeline down the road um, as they sponsor these students. So finally, just to kind of both of you weigh in on where do you see ed tech, future of education, because you're kind of on the floor. Where do you see things going? How will it be for another generation for education? Yeah, so there's big changes, and I think the biggest one we've seen, again, is that pivot away from four-year universities, mm -hmm. these more light and nimble, very specific learning uh, endeavors. And then on the other side, um, of course, that the student debt crisis continues to grow, and uh, students will be more you know, careful about the decisions that they make. Um, so while we definitely will cater the traditional education, that's still a huge sector, I think we're going to see more and more talent shifting towards the certificate or boot camp-based learning, not only just in web, but other applications as well. My background's in STEM and engineering, and, mm -hmm. you know, I think I think there's a lot of extra weight with these traditional degrees, so I think there's going to be a demand for, you know, call it the bare bones kit and do a lot more on-the-job learning. Yeah, interesting. Ben? And I, I see, you know, sort of a, a cleansing. Uh, ed tech was kind of a, a buzzword the last few years, and you're, you saw lots of startups spring up that had, you know, high promises and, you know, necessarily didn't deliver on a lot of the promises. So you're going to see a lot of the, you know, youth centricity rise to the top, and I think blockchain can be the conduit for that. Very interesting. Thank you so much, and best Thank of luck. You. Thank you.